All right, guys, have to grab a key in today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Another day in the Call of Duty scene, another fair share of drama after Faye Santana called out Doug a few days ago and Censor certainly responded after all the drama that was going down there. He's now called out Temp's music just last night and Temp certainly has a response for him as well. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one. Kind of funny, really. All this Doug drama has hit the main stream. I saw Ludwig on his Mogul Mail channel did a video on this. He also and even Charlie Ride Moist Critical made a video called Cloud Behaviour as well with, uh, well, here he is, Doug in the thumbnail. The funniest thing about this whole thumbnail is I think, and especially since his room, is that he's got a picture of himself in the background, which I always find absolutely hilarious. But as you can see in this picture in the background, he's got the Phase logo on his jersey, which of course is definitely a topic of discussion today because you know, Sensor believes once in Phase kind of always in Phase, kind of got that brotherhood with some of the guys over there in Phase, but apparently Apparently not with certain phase members, we shall see here in a second. Now, firstly, wanted to mention a couple of things on Modern Warfare 2, just uh, saying here from the Ghosts of Hope that just because we're a few weeks away now does not mean that things are going to get dried up, let's just say, between the beta and the release of the game. He says we certainly will be getting further info and news, maybe about the campaign and stuff like this, so we'll see if there are any leaks with regard to what Infinity War, if anything, decide to change. We did see it probably about three days before the game launched last year for Vanguard that uh, Sledgehammer came out with a kind of, well, Twitter post effectively saying that Ninja will be a perk in the game. Now, do we expect Infinity Ward to do that? I would say probably not, but hopefully we do get some rumours over the next couple of weeks that they might be considering some changes to the footsteps or dead silence or whatever. We shall, I suppose, stay tuned and have to find out on that one. And um, also just wanted to mention this, because lots of talk on the third game modes, what exactly it's going to be for this year's CDL action. Is it going to be capture the flag? Are we going to have control back again? Which is probably what I expect them to do, but who really knows? Or could we have a different game mode. Now, I think he's talking about a slightly different version of the war mode in World War II, but you guys may remember a war mode from all the way back in World at War, which was actually brought back in Advanced Warfare as a game that I believe called Momentum, where there are five flags on the map to capture, and um, and basically you just have to capture like all the way to the final one, and basically if you capture one flag, you then have to go capture the next flag, and the other team must not defend. Not really sure how well it would work for competitive. It's probably domination on steroids to some degree, but it might be worth considering at least if it arrives into the game, but I wouldn't put too much money on Infinity War doing exactly that. And of course, we are hoping that there's going to be a good ranked play system in this upcoming game. It's kind of crazy to me how well COD Mobile does it. The funny thing is, of course, the COD Mobile World Championship is going to be alongside Major 1 this season for the CDL at that event in Raleigh, which is hopefully going to be rather insightful just because, like, COD Mobile does a lot of things right in a way. They have a lot of good maps. They have all the weapons from across history. And yes, it's played on your phone or the iPad or whatever you play it on, but it also has a very competent ranked system, right? Like, you can see here, you get like the legendary situation going on. You have your ranked match and you have your, your history for your rank history and all this type of stuff. Like it's crazy the amount of stuff they actually have locked in on mobile, but like don't copy across for the real game. And this is one of the positives potentially of having a two year cycle for Call of Duty is that maybe some of this stuff can actually arrive because I believe mobile's now been out for like three years and probably a lot of this stuff wasn't there quite when it launched, but then was added over time. So hopefully at least people that are watching the CDL and watching COD Mobile realize, hang on a second, that's pretty good. Those are some good ideas we can maybe take into the CDL. I suppose we'll see if they come up with a similar idea, but it's also a similar idea here. Right? Look at all these weapons. You can see your ranked weapons, or how many kills you have with it, accuracy statistics, this type of stuff. And of course, this we've had this in regular Call of Duty for a long time, but in the recent games, the combat record is nowhere near as detailed as it was a few years ago. So hopefully they can figure that one out when the game launches. Let's talk about this Santana, Doug, Temp drama then, right? So when this whole sense thing was going on a few days ago, where Center was kind of exposing some Warzone players, this is what Santana Santana said. Now, I'm not really familiar with this guy too much. I believe he's good friends with Swag and obviously he's in that kind of phase situation as it stands. Now, I don't really know what he was coming at Doug so much. Like, okay, Doug, of course, understandably was getting roasted at the end of the whole drama, but during the first stages of it, people were behind Doug, right? People were like, yeah, Doug, let's go expose the cheaters and stuff. Now, Santana says, Center is going to expose the top 250 in Vanguard ranked. Who cares about those kids? Why not go after streamers that everyone's talking about? All these Nadia tweets and you're going after kids in the top 250 impression grounds. 
Instagram, he says. So that was the first tweet of many. Then he went on to say the following, how many people actually got exposed in that four hour stream and why was the chat on subscriber mode or something? He goes on to say this ain't gonna end well for you, Doug. Better hope you catch some credible names. A lot of barking, but no biting. And then Doug says in the replies, crazy that a phase member is assuming that an ex phase member doesn't know what he's doing. There's levels to this game. He goes on to say the following, right? I'm glad you have millions of followers, Doug. I'm glad you're also in the best shape of your life. But if we take a step back and realize what's going on here and you know you're in the wrong, you might even be a little scared. I might know nothing and you might be on a different, I think you went on to say level to me, etc, etc. And then Doug says, look, stop right there. You have no idea what's going on. Sit back, grab your popcorn and buy Twitch tab if you don't want to put money in my pocket, right? So yeah, kind of crazy really just because Doug, like I think he still has a good relationship with a fair few of those old like phase members and Santana was you know, coming at him pretty hard right here. And then of course everything goes down. Santana was roasting him pretty hard after the whole situation concluded. I hope you all finally see that he is a joke, right? So it's not like Santana's wrong necessarily, but I was somewhat surprised why he was coming at Doug in the first place, why he had a particular vendetta against Doug during all this drama. So at the end of the day, Doug then responded on stream and said, I'm going to second, I'm not going to take this slander. This Santana guy, you know, I'm formerly a phase. He's now in phase. Like, of course, technically Doug's now on the Boston Breach Rubber, spent a long part of his career in phase. That's kind of what he did with that phase brand. And even Doug goes on to say here, like, look what I did with the phase brand. Wondering exactly what this guy's doing with it. But also then I'll share a clip from Donny Temp last night where Santana also made some comments with regard to Temp's music. No matter what, even if I... No, I gotta stop for a second, but it pissed me off. Yo, although I'm a Boston Breach professional Call of Duty player, technically on their Challenger team, I will always be FaZe at heart. It's, it's always gonna be my history. To see someone from FaZe acting like that, it's like, bro, you're 24 years old, bro. Bro, I don't even know you. I only know you because of swag. Like, I don't know anything about what you've done in your career, bro. And you coming out here like, this is gonna backfire on you. You better not blah, 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 blah. It's like, dude, worry about yourself, man. What the f bro? This shit is weird to me, bro. This Santana guy, like, I got a problem with that mother honestly. Like, what the f is that guy's deal with me? Like, if you wanna say something, say something, Santana. Deadass, say something, bro. Like, I'm right here. I will see you in person. I hope. Like, seriously, what the f is wrong? Like, I've never seen a phase member say anything like that, bro. That's actually crazy to me, bro. Like, what type of phase member does that? to an ex-phase member, bro. That's weird. That actually, like, pisses me off. Right? He tweeted, Ken, happy birthday, and then it was like, oh, by the way, tell your homie delete the song. <laughs> That's oh dick suck. God. Is that not dick suck? How you, gonna tell, how you gonna tell someone happy birthday with a dick in your mouth? That's crazy. The damn Swallow that shit first. Down to late. Hey, yeah. What you mean? How you gonna say? I'm not tweaking. I'm not tweaking. How you gonna say happy birthday with a dick in your mouth? That's never before seen. That's a record. I'm tweaking. I'm tweaking. So I think as a result of all this kind of, you know, Doug versus Santana drama, people were looking up this guy, okay, who is this guy? Or why has he got a vendetta against Doug or whatever? And then found this tweet from the 3rd of September. So this was a while ago. I think this might have been Kenny's birthday party, whatever was happening at the time. Of course, Doddy Temp is in the building. He's got the glasses on. Looks like he's just come off set of, of filming the music video for Rain Rain. Of course, he's, yeah, he's putting some tracks on his YouTube the last several days. Not all of them might be great, but still, it's a certain taste. People like some of them people don't like other ones. That's absolutely fine. Your first track's not going to be particularly good. If Donny Temp makes 50 tracks, the 50th one I'm sure is going to be an absolute banger. Now, Santana comes in the replies here and says, tell man to delete the song while you're with him, right? So, like, this just seems, obviously this is about a month ago now, but it seems rather unnecessary to say, like, look, this guy's songs are terrible, just delete the songs, right? So, I don't know why this, yeah, again, I don't know why it needs to be said. You can just, uh, you know, obviously the, the old adage goes, whatever. If you don't have anything nice to say, better not to say anything at all. So, and of course, like, Temp's now gonna see this and think, I'm gonna second it. You know, why are you coming at me like this for no reason? And even Temp goes on to say this, you know, sucking D from across the nation is crazy, he says. And this gets obviously 2,000 likes. So, I mean, yeah, that's of course what, what uh, Temp was echoing there on his Twitch stream just a couple of seconds ago. So, yeah, what do you guys think about this, right? Of course, Doug, it's understandable people are gonna roast him, but I thought the whole situation was kind of strange. And now people are, you know, not necessarily digging up Santana tweets. This was only from a month ago where he's coming at Temp for seemingly no reason and Temp's, you know, within his rights, of course, to respond to it. So, yeah, it's kind of funny how in the COD scene, drama is never far away, especially for me for some of the CDL pros, right? So, this Santana guy's been getting clowned a fair bit for this one. Not even sure exactly, like, why he's in phase or how he got into phase or whatever the situation is. I think he's a Warzone guy for them. I don't know how good he is at Warzone compared to some of the other guys they've got on their team. So, uh, like, I'm sure that if this continues, there will be points like that brought over the coming days. He even tweeted this out as well, actually. This guy replied to Temp saying the following, and um, then uh, 
uh, T- Donnie Temp kind of uh, quote tweeted it saying, bro, like chocolate and vanilla. So I'm not going to comment on that anymore, but I'm just going to leave it there for now. But uh, yes, COD drama is never too far away. Couple of interesting things to finish out the video here with. First of all, I thought this was a crazy stat here from Brian Sats that came up with last night. From the 93 tournaments, so between Black Ops 2, I guess the start of Black Ops 2, and all the way to the end of Call of Duty Vanguard, there's been just shy of 100 tournaments in COD history. It's kind of funny because the CDL and Activision likes to sometimes pretend that uh, the pre-CDL era didn't even exist, but it existed uh, long before the CDL was around. But including all of those tournaments, that's pretty much when this, like the league, in terms of Call of Duty competitive, started to become serious. There wasn't really a league for quite some time, but at the start of Black Ops 2, that's kind of when things started to kick into gear in terms of having a real circuit. There was a World Championship the year, for example, and it was in March, right, so relatively close to the start of the season. So in all of those 93 tournaments, Scump, Crimsex, Slasher, or Simp were featured in the grand finals of 81% of them. That is quite the remarkable statistic right to think about over that tenure. And it's interesting to me that Slasher is the fourth man here because Simp, of course, he's been the dominant force really of the CDL era since, of course, Modern Warfare has come out. He's been in the majority of the tournament grand finals and he's been in all the World Championship grand finals over the last few years as well. But at Scump and Crimsex, of course, you'd expect them to be there because Scump and Crimsex were both on Optic for quite a few years. But also, you know, Scump and Crim were on the different teams in the Black Ops 2 and Ghost stage, right, where Krim was on complexity and evil geniuses, and that kind of, you know, tallies up a lot of those years in terms of grand finals appearances, for sure, and then they were on the same team for quite some time, but I'm guessing the way he's done this, right, is to say, okay, Skump, Krim, and Simp, how many tournaments, grand finals were they in over the last few years? What is the fourth player to add to that that increases the number the most? And Slasher is probably that guy, right? So it's kind of interesting how, of course, was on Optic Gaming Los Angeles, but not really on Optic or any of the kind of dynasty teams, but if you consider, you know, Slasher, for example, in the phase days back in the day and even more recently on you know 100 thieves and the like he's actually been in a lot of the grand finals where scump and crim weren't so even if you put clayster in here for example he probably doesn't quite get to the same numbers as putting slasher into the team so i thought that was kind of a remarkable piece of information and just to break this down by title actually so in black ops 2 all of these four players of course simp at this point was practically still in the womb but he gets eight out of the ten in black ops 2 10 out of 13 in ghost and of course there were so many tournaments back in the ghost days for example that some of these players probably didn't even attend some of these tournaments right and that's maybe why they weren't counted here but in advanced warfare 13 out of 14 had one of these three teams or one of these three guys in the grand final sim of course only came along from black ops 4 so these first tourneys you're only considering skump crim and sasha world war 2 is the worst record only four out of nine included these guys in the grand finals makes sense i guess because skump and crim were of course on the same team and sasha was on rise in a few grand finals but nothing crazy and then since black ops 4 and really the cdl era like these guys have almost all always been in the grand finals there's only three tournaments in the last four years where one of these four players hasn't been in the grand final i'm sure simp is of course helping out with that but you know scump crim and slasher no slouches either over the last few titles as well but yes 92 percent of the tournaments in the last three years where one of these four has featured so very much enjoyed your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below i just wanted to mention this as well here real quick because this i guess is at the cod next event here where they met up with some of the rush gaming guys i think a few years ago attach actually went out to japan for some sort of event that was going on there and um, I mean yeah hopefully at one point or another we actually get this league expanded beyond just effectively North America especially now Paris is moving to Vegas but very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you are new take care and I'll see you next time